Hello, everyone. My guest today is Craig Hewitt. He's the founder of Castos, a full remote team remaking uh, how podcasters create great shows, grow their audiences, and further their brands. Craig, you ready to chase the top? Yep, I'm ready. So what came first for you? Were you a technology guy that got into podcasting or a podcasting guy that wanted to solve his own, scratch his own itch and, and learn the tech? Yeah, definitely the second. Uh, kind of got into podcasting a roundabout way and, and kind of the business side of it. And uh, yeah, it's been yeah just over three years uh, since I've been running Castos and it's been a lot of fun. Very cool. Okay, so for folks that have not heard of it, what does Castos do? Yeah, so we're a, a podcast hosting and analytics provider that also has a built-in production service. So for shows like this, for folks who want to kind of host their podcast, distribute it to places like you know Apple Podcasts and Spotify, that's what we do, provide analytics around that, and then have kind of a done-for-you service arm that, that takes care of all the editing and show notes and publishing. Uh, so we're kind of your built-in podcast producer. So would you categorize this, I mean, more as a, it's pure software running the show, or is it really software plus humans, some professional services built in? Yeah, we're software with the service. Yep. Okay, interesting. So just so we understand sort of the split, and this will kind of guide my, my questioning, um, if you look at your total revenue over the past 12 months, what percent would you say is, is software requiring revenue versus setup fees, professional services? Yeah, like 70, 30? 70 SaaS? 70 SaaS, yeah. Okay, so let's focus on that for a second, and we'll circle back to professional services. If people pay you just for your what you offer on a SaaS basis, what would they be getting? Uh, so you get hosting and analytics. Uh, so we host your audio files, help you manage your RSS feed, which is kind of the, the thing that podcasts are. Uh, and then we give analytics about, you know, where folks are listening and how many downloads your shows get. So very similar to like Libsyn or other, other players like hosting platforms like this. Yeah. Yeah. At, at its core, we, we've done a lot of kind of expand. <laughs> no, because I mean, I think, I think that's the, that's the easy, that's the easy analogy, but I think what we've done is, is kind of expand the idea of that a lot. So we have things to kind of repurpose and extend the content that you create. So we have things like automated transcriptions, we have automatic republishing of your content to YouTube. So for folks who aren't recording video like this, they just want to do audio because they don't want to, you know, get all pretty for the, for the camera and stuff like that. We can give them a way to have a presence on YouTube uh, where they don't have to record native video content. So we've done a lot with the platform to, to do that, to be more than just a hosting platform, but, but really see. kind of like a marketing platform for podcasts. I see. I see. Okay. And what do people, what do podcasters pay you on average to use this per month? Yeah. So we have plans starting at $19 a month, all the way up to a hundred dollars a month. Um, and we have annual plans, you know, for like 20% discount of that. Would you say the average is probably around the 19, 20 mark? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, most most folks are on the beginner plan because a lot of folks, you know, podcast is for, for a lot of people is not a revenue generating thing. So they have a hard time paying too much for it. Mm -hmm. What is the upgrade tactic you use to get folks from 20 bucks a month to 100 bucks a month? Yeah, so we feature gate a lot of uh, a lot of what we do. So um, things like the YouTube republishing, automated transcriptions, uh, an integration with a tool called Headliner to create audiograms. Um, and some advanced analytics, uh, the last part really gets up into that, that higher tier. I think analytics, as you probably know, is something that, that podcasters are hungry for more of. And we have some, some proprietary, uh, analytics that we provide folks in our, in our pro tier at the hundred dollar month plan. Yep. And, and when did you launch the company? Uh, yeah, right at three years ago, we launched, uh, the company officially. Twice. Okay. Put it in 2017 and you bootstrapped today or you decided to go to the equity or raise capital? Uh, we took a small amount of investment and joined the Tiny Seed Accelerator oh, yeah. um, about a, just over a year ago. So we were part of the first patch there. Uh, so we got a little bit of money there, um, but otherwise have been bootstrapped. We just had Einar on who really broke down how, how Tiny Seed operates and works and how it all works. And he's, yeah. he surprised me with a statement. He said he believes 80% of the fund returns will come from companies exiting not dividends, which is kind of the, in my opinion, that's sort of the idea of what they're building, which is you never have to sell. You can build a great profitable company, pay yourself, uh, you know, dividends. And oh, by the way, pay us the, our dividend cut as well. W what are your thoughts on that as a founder on the other side? Um, so, I mean, you know, being in the podcasting space, we're not, you know, a CRM where we're going to be around forever. We think we could be around forever. You know, there's just a ton of kind of velocity in the podcasting space these days. And so we expect something to happen with our business in the next five years, say. And so that's, that's a lot of why we joined Tiny Seed. And that's, that's kind of the, the path I expect us to take is something will happen. I don't know what that is. We have a lot of options because, you know, now we're profitable. Um, but, but I'm surprised to hear uh, that, that you're surprised by that because I view like Tiny Seed getting their money back 
being mostly in in exits for for founders. Um, just because I think that's the way a lot of businesses go. I think well, see, a lot I, of people I think the will DNA, exit at some point. My, my, see, my thought though is, I mean, I when I interview bootstrap founders, many of them have built extremely comfortable lives sitting on cash flow from the business. They are the exact opposite DNA of a founder that wants to scale big and sell for a bunch of money. It's the mm, it's like the yeah. exact opposite DNA. So the fact that and I, by the way, like when I listen to how Einar and Rob and the team sort of talk about Tiny, um, it feels very much to me like we are for the bootstrapper in Kentucky that's happy with a $5 million AR company and $2 million a year in profits that never wants to sell. So it just that's why it surprised me when Einar said, no, we think 80% of our fund returns will come from companies exiting. Mm. Yeah, I think I, I would guess that the, the founders are maybe a little more ambitious than the, the person you described. Um, why do you why do you equate an exit to ambition? I would argue that there are extremely ambitious founders that have built great profitable companies, and that's actually sometimes harder to do than get some big exit. Yeah, I, I think that's a fair point. I, I think that you know if you look at really kind of changing your life and putting you on a different trajectory, you know, selling a business for twenty million and taking home you know whatever ten uh, changes your life versus a business that that cash flows, you know, half a million dollars a year, that's great, but you can't just go F off and do whatever you want for the rest of your life. Like if you sold for a bunch of bunch of money and you could just put that into dividend funds and things like that, then then you have complete control of your life. And and there's a different kind of risk, I guess, uh involved with your uh your path from there. Sure, sure. No, that makes complete sense. When you came back on on January 9th of 2019, you'd said you passed a thousand customers at that point. What are you guys at today? Yeah, we're right at 2,000 customers today. Oh, wow. The, the good timing on the show then. Exactly, exactly yeah. doubled. Yep. <laughs> okay, very cool. Um, so to, uh, 2,000. And then have you done anything team-related? So how many folks are on the team? I think you were four people last time we talked. Yeah, so we're seven full-time people. Uh, and with the services arm, we have some contractors that do you know audio editing, writing. We have some folks on the marketing team that help on a contract basis. Yep. Of those seven folks, how many are engineers? Uh, two. Two. Okay. And I imagine you probably don't have quota carrying sales folks for this price point, right? That's right. Yep. Yeah. 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 It's more of a, so let's go down that path for a second. How are people finding you? What's the, what's the playbook here? Yeah. So we do, uh, we, we do a lot in kind of content and SEO. That's, that's kind of our main acquisition strategy these days. Um, we also have a, a WordPress plugin that we own and, and maintain called seriously civil podcasting. That is, uh, that is kind of the way a lot of folks find us is through a WordPress integration. So if you have What's a WordPress it site, it's called Seriously Simple Podcasting. Hmm. So if you have a WordPress site, you want to kind of plug in a, a, a blog to it or a podcast, I'm sorry, then you install our plugin, let you kind of add a podcast area to your site, manage your RSS feed from there, and then cast us as a hosting platform is a, an optional kind of add-on that, that you can have there. Interesting. Was that intentional that that was going to be sort of your mousetrap at the top of the funnel? Yeah, that's that's really how the business started. Is I acquired the plugin. It was it was a free plugin before, and I acquired it from from the guy that created it. Uh, and we kind of built the hosting platform around that. Uh, and for a while, it was the only way that you could use the hosting platform is through WordPress. Since then, we've opened it up to to be either use it with WordPress or use it by itself. If you you, know, you don't want to have a full website or you're done on WordPress or whatever, you can use Castos by itself. You know, like you use Libsyn probably. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, good. So that's driving most of your top of funnel. Uh, and again, 2000 customers, 20 bucks a month. So you guys are like 40, 45,000 bucks a month right now in revenue. Yeah. And so the when the services were right at 60,000 a month. Okay. So let's dive into this, the services component. If I sign up to you today on the $20 a month plan, what will you recommend to me in terms of services I should buy from you as well? Yeah. So, I mean, we have, we have kind of, you know, opt-ins and, and kind of messages and new email and an onboarding within the app to say, Hey, you know, you don't have to do this all by yourself. We have a team of, you know, professional audio engineers and people that know podcasting in and out. If you need help with starting your show and then ongoing editing and, and producing your show, we have, we have teams that can help with that. And is, do you, do you, when you do a cohort analysis of your 2000 customers, the ones that have paid for some professional services and the ones that have not, do you see the same trend that other founders tell me they see, which is the ones that you give services to the net retention rate is through the roof compared to ones you don't touch at all. Yep. It's great. I wish we, I, you know, you asked me what the, the split was. I wish it was higher to be honest, because <laughs> services are, are not hard. Um, you know, if you get the systems and the people in place and you, you know, those things are, are working well and kind of optimized that they're not hard to run. Um, our services arm requires less of my time than, than things like product, mm -hmm. um, on the software side. 
And you funded all this again. You, you said you took a tiny deal. What do they, I think they usually do 100 or 150. Is that what you took? 120, yeah. 120,000. Okay, interesting. And what was that process like, the onboarding process there? For tiny seed? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, they they had kind of their standard deal. I'm sure Einar talked about that uh, when he was on it. And we, we didn't have kind of too many questions there. And, you know, we signed up there and they took a, a percentage of equity um, in return for for that investment. And uh, and with that, we, we hired our first marketer and kind of took one of our engineers full time. That's what we used a lot of the money for. I think the first cohort was a little different than the second and probably subsequent ones in that a lot of uh, companies, the first cohort kind of weren't to profitability and didn't have a, a good degree of product market fit. We did, I think. Um, we, it was probably around the time I was on the show. Last is, you know, we were, you know, paying my salary and everything. And so we were able to just take that money and invest it in growth, not in, you know, paying my salary and paying rent and things like that. Were you able to negotiate down the equity slug that they take? I mean, I think typically they take 10%. So if they're taking 10% for 120K, it's valuing the company at a million bucks, but you're already at a quarter million in ARR at that point a year ago. And now at half a million bucks in ARR, I'd argue that's undervaluing the company. Yeah. Yeah. We negotiated a little bit. Yeah. Okay, good. So you had some leverage going in with real revenue. Yep. Got it. And profitable today? Yeah. Paying dividends or no? No, no. And we plan to <laughs> reinvest in the company as long as I can, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. All right. So, so what is, I mean, when you talk about obviously keeping customers, professional services, touch, et cetera, churn's critical in a SaaS company. Last time, I think you told me you had about 72% annual retention on a revenue basis. Has that improved? Uh, yeah, I mean, our monthly churn is like two and a half percent. Okay, got it. So about 20, 24 percent annual churn today. And why are most of those folks uh, stopping or the ones that do stop? Yeah, most all of it is just, you know, I, I, I'm not podcasting anymore. I, I can't do this. It's too hard. I don't have time to talk to people and editing and things like that. And yeah, I mean, the professional services, when we get the right fit, helps reduce that a lot. You know, I think you can probably attest that if you had to do all this yourself, you wouldn't do it. So uh, finding a good solution to that is really helpful. Last question here before we wrap up with the famous five. When you're acquiring new customers, obviously the Chrome plugins are a critical aspect of that. But if you do try and back into a fully weighted customer acquisition cost for a new $20 a month customer, what would you say your CAC is? Oh, gracious. Um, that's that's a tough one. I don't, I don't have a number for that, I guess. I mean, almost all, we don't do any paid acquisition hardly at this point. So all of ours is, is organic, you know, content and SEO. So I don't have a number, but it's very low, yeah. How many new customers are you adding per month, would you say? Uh, we have about 800 new trials a month. And can you finish the funnel for me? How many of those typically convert? Uh, 150, 200. Okay, that's pretty high. I, mean, that's, I would say that's pretty high. Yeah. Uh, okay, 150 to 200 convert. And then, um, and then again, they stick on average about 98% every month. Yep. That's great. Okay, very good. So not really a good, a good massive page strategy. They're mostly SEO and inbound. Um, good stuff, Craig. Let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, favorite business book? Uh, Built to Sell. Built to Sell. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Uh, yeah, it's the same one I answered last time. Uh, Jordan Gall from Cart Hook. Uh, just really respect him. He's kind of like one step ahead and just love listening to what he's doing. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building the company? Notion. Number four, how many hours of sleep are you getting every night? Uh, at least eight. Okay, good. And situation, married, single kids? Yes, all that. Married, <laughs> two kids. Married, two kids. And how old are you, Craig? I'm um, 40. 40. 40, the big 4 All right, last question. Yeah. What, do you, what do you wish you knew when you were 20? Well, I wish I would have started this before. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I spent uh, about 15 years of my professional life in kind of the corporate world, and I wish I would have started as an entrepreneur sooner. It's, it's a lot of fun and really invigorating. Guys, there you have it, Castos, helping podcasters get going, but not only get up and going, also distribute their content once it's live, manage the hosting, production, et cetera. Now serving over 2,000 customers each month that pay $20 per month, so call it $480,000 in monthly recurring revenue as Craig continues to scale the company. Seven people, they work with Tiny Seed early on and raise 120 grand, otherwise completely bootstrap, spending nothing on uh, CAC, mostly using a Chrome plugin strategy to get new top of funnel users along with an SEO and content strategy. Craig, thanks for taking us to the top. Thanks, Nathan. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. 
one founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares backend dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.